For Darien Gaps, 100 kilometers of roadless jungle has always been a big question mark on this transcontinental road trip. The thick jungle and swamplands that separate South America from its central and northern neighbors has been crossed before, but by teams of people much more prepared than us. And 40 years later, still with no bridges or ferry services, it was a long, difficult, and expensive process to get Capito around the Darien. However, what was more difficult was getting me and the dog across. There's two options. The luxury of a safe sailing experience for up to $900. Or taking a chance in the unpredictable Darien region itself. So for the first time, we were at the mercy of other drivers. Alaska was being refused entry to board. Our only option, pretend to be blind and turn her into a guide dog. So with my eyes closed, I stumbled into far from gorilla territory into one of the most inhospitable and dangerous regions in the world, where armed activity and drug smuggling is as prevalent as the malaria-infested mosquitoes. We knew how to get into the Darien, we just had no idea of how we'd get out. After passing the kids hunting tropical birds, we trekked on solo, trying to find a way through the jungle and into Panama. However, we were turned back by men with bigger guns than Rambo. And when the local police station looks like this, you don't argue with the men in uniform in these parts. So I prepared for my only other very wet option. For sure this is the most heavily armed border crossing I've ever crossed. It was obvious from the get-go that this is the most important town in the world for cocaine smuggling. I thought that was it, the half part over. But getting from here to where the roads start is half the distance of Panama. Indeed, getting anywhere from here is easier said than done. I'm starting to feel a little trapped by these impassable hills. Every day I spent pleading with the boat's captains and their families to take me north. Every evening I watched these boats leave without me. And every night I string up my hammock and hold out against the millions of mosquitoes. After four long days of desperate waiting, I finally got my name on the list and permission to board.
stopping for fuel at this Kuna indigenous community. Nobody told us that dogs were banned on the island. Most of the kids had never even seen a dog before and were petrified. Alaska loved it. Our boatman informed us he was no longer taking us to the agreed destination, but rather leaving us stranded on a remote island. Accusations of kidnapping and arguments followed, resulting in armed intervention and me being threatened with jail and deportation. But peace talks prevailed, and I was allowed to rest and explore their community. And finally, the first roads of Central America were in sight. This funky bus dropped us in the heart of the ghetto, where poverty and violent crime is all the people know. I was far from safe, and I was forced to take refuge from the streets in broad daylight. My only option? A pay by the hour brothel. The whole shipping process was complicated and stressful, but nowhere near as difficult as taking Alaska for a nightly walk in the city. We were super happy to be reunited with Capito and leave the ghetto unharmed. That's it, we're on the move. All the adventures of Central America are ours for the making, and if the last year is anything to go by, we're in for a seriously good time. So, we're going exploring. Are you coming? <laughs>